Greetings, YouTube and Instagram. Meredith Moore here in downtown Lawrence, Kansas. It is a Wednesday. So while we were off the air yesterday, and we'll probably be off the air the remainder of the week, we're here on Wednesday because, of course, Wednesday is the day that our stationer to the stars, Nikita Amafidon, will be here. Um, and we think that's the case, too. So we uh, got to check in and see what's up out there because things down here are a lot. And there's local news there's to cover. There's local news to cover. First piece of local news I actually wanted to bring up because Nikita mentioned it to me and it was an important light bulb. You know, we talked a little bit on Monday about the Sunday evening protests in Lawrence, which uh, hundreds of people turned out for, possibly over a thousand. And um, in that talk, I discussed how things didn't escalate the way they have in Kansas City, in part because the police were not being an aggressive presence. They stayed back at the perimeter and their job was to like block traffic and keep people safe, which- Doing the um, job you think police yes, might, but might importantly, be contractually obligated to do. Importantly, uh, they actually didn't do that job well. So it isn't correct to say that the protests were peaceful because two cars were able to get into traffic and at one point accelerate through it in a way that could have seriously injured or killed someone, which tragically we've seen in protests in the past and mm -hmm. it's happening. Um, you're watching videos of it on Twitter. So I wanna correct myself because it's not, uh, just because we were over in a different part of the zone and that turned out like people jumped out of the way in time doesn't make the action not violent or important. Mm -hmm. right. um, and uh, that's because there's there's some jerks living amongst us folks. So thanks for the fact check, Nikita, mm -hmm. on that one. Yep, 100%. And um, in updated news as well about this peaceful protests, I just want to talk to feel like white people need to talk to each other more about these things. And so I'm going to say to them out there, like, it doesn't help when peacefulness about the protests is what you center, I think, my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, how peacefully people can protest shouldn't be the metric for how successfully. What should be the metric is if people actually get something done about it. And uh, if their voices are actually heard and lifting up our comfort with how the protests went is in front of what the protests accomplished and why they're happening, that's a failure for us. So um, I'm specifically calling out Lisa Larson on this, who last night in city commission meeting um, really foregrounded the peacefulness of the protests. And I think it makes people comfortable to fall back on that position of uh, how we're trying to do it nice and we're trying to follow the rules but we want to specifically talk today about how um, oftentimes it's really easy to say you'd like things to happen the nice way and follow the rules and that'll be effective. But we saw last night in city commission that that is not the case. And people will tell you that they are devoted to anti-racism and fixing our broken criminal justice system, which is actually working the way it was designed because it's racist. And then they will actually not use their power to peacefully and safely dismantle the system. They will step aside and let the system continue to work. And we'll even vote for it, which disheartens me greatly. And I hope there's something happening that we're not aware of about decisions that were made to approve the permitting of the jail last night. And I don't pretend to know what's happening behind the scenes. And I vow to reach out individually to find out if I missed something before I light people up on Twitter which I would li would have liked to, but it's not about my feelings, it's about actions and taking right actions. And did I ever even say what I'm talking about? Nope. So local Whoops. in local news, last night, our city commission voted four to one to allow for permitting um, the new jail expansion. Um, I cover... just, uh, let's just do okay. a review of what that even means. Yeah. So that there's no confusion for people who maybe aren't aware of the backstory. The city commission actually had nothing to do with initially initiating and then continually moving forward 
the jail process because the jail is administered by the county and not the city. So it was a countywide vote that initially we rejected it actually twice. And then it was a follow up from the county commission without a vote where they passed it after a couple of meetings, um, which were very well attended by locals saying, pleading, crying for four hours of crying at a podium, begging the county commission not to pass the jail. All the county commissioners unanimously still voted to pass the jail. This was in January. I remember it being at mm -hmm. like the height of our very busy business season. Yeah. So it was only a few months ago. And then, um, so this is just like a little, was like a little red tape thing. We're not open. Sorry. Oh, uh, you're not Nikita, but it's so nice to see y'all. And we will be open in a week or so. The back door's open for Nikita. But sometimes not for people customers. Are just wondering. That's on us. <laughs> um, okay. So where was I? In Sorry, my tail. Can I ask a question? Yes. Should be some drop off that's here. I don't know. Not oh, yes. Are you something? here to pick up a package? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. At the front door is actually where that would happen. Um, Thank you so much. I, yeah. I, I, one second. Hey, Lexi. Instructions on the other side. Sorry for that. Oh, no worries at all. It's okay. No worries. Thanks. No worries. Um, they're going to meet you at the front door, I think. Oh. Okay. That was good. That's just like, you know what? We're all trying to just do our lives. So real. <laughs> but we have to also pay attention to decisions that are being made today that impact people's lives in the future. So. This was just a little red tape decision, folks. The city probably has never, I'm not sure if they've ever had a chance to vote on anything jail related until now. And it was just the technicality because in order to build the big jail in the first place, they had to change a zoning code mm -hmm. that the property sits on so that they could change its use to make it enforcement center. Right. And because of that code change, they were required to go through the city to get this rubber stamp and get the building permit, which you need because red tape. Normally red tape just stops people from like adding a patio to their business or whatever. But in this case, red tape could have been used to just like tie up an issue that uh, is really a hot issue right now and just pause it. Mm -hmm. And it would have been um, maybe not a buy the book choice, but um, everyone did say in the city commission that they understand that um, our criminal justice system is racist and needs reform and that they would work against it. And then not they everyone. had, a ch that's true. Not everyone. Yes. So Brad Finkel did. No, sorry, Brad did. Stuart, Stuart Bowley really did not, make did such not a comment. mention anything. But about uh, they didn't. And again, I just, I want to say for us, that feels like it was uh, Courtney Bell. I'm uh, sorry, Courtney Shipley did vote a uh, protest vote of nay. Everyone else felt that their hands were tied. Um, and I just feel... It, it was really hard to witness because <sighs> yes. um, if there's a recognition that the system's broken... Um, or never worked. Then how can you continue to play by those broken rules right. um, and not seize an opportunity? These commissioners had a power yesterday uh, a, or even a duty um, that we elected them to do. Um, and they could have put the brakes on this. Mm -hmm. And um, they looked for every opportunity to excuse themselves from executing that power. Mm -hmm. um, the lawyer on staff was asked many questions. Um, I highly encourage people to go ahead and watch. You can watch the uh, recording of the meeting. But uh, I guess we just want to state and reaffirm that um, it's difficult to believe that someone truly believes in reforming the system and then immediately votes to conform with the system. Um, that's complicity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're excited to learn what we might be missing about how that was a progressive choice um, and not just upholding the status quo. It was a rubber stamp. Is rubber is stamping. What it felt like I mean, us. I love rubber stamp. You know what? If we were doing a normal. I brought some great rubber stamps we here. Are a I don't think I'm going to show them right now, but no. maybe maybe sometime later you can see these great new rubber stamps we got in. If you would like to buy and send many rubber stamps to your city commissioners, that could be a thing. Just throwing that out there. Anyway, probably don't do that. I mean, we're trying. I don't know. You know what? Maybe you just, you can't always like do it nice. You can't always go by the book. There's no reason to go by the book. As I said in a kind of the book was Instagram. written in a 
in a crummy way. The canon itself is racist. Uh, that's something we talk about in art history school all the time. Like, man, our canon sucks. We should make it more diverse. And then people are like, buy this old book. In Lawrence, we used Stockstad, which is the most diverse <laughs> The option. most local art history book yeah, you can get. it's the most local. But you know what? There's probably, I hope, something better by now. Um, I should look into what they're using for the canon of art history these days. Spoiler alert, it's going to weigh 7,000 pounds, and it makes an excellent soapbox. You can step right up on that bad boy. It's like <laughs> seven inches high, and your feet fully, full coverage, unless you've got like super big clown feet. Even then, I think it would probably support you. There is always a copy for sale at the Dusty Bookshelf, as a fun fact. Always a copy. <laughs> the students always, just always unloading that one. They were like, I can't carry this <laughs> home. It's 7,000 pounds. So that's, um, what did I cover all of? Uh, so that's just our update uh, on what happened. We, uh, I yeah. also want to say a bunch of people apparently contacted them. So they are working through those inboxes right now. And that's good. Yep. That's red tape for them to read through and um, we, think about. Yeah, we will try and get you information sooner. Um, yeah, that was, our, I wish I'd pay better attention. I was all caught up thinking about this, expand the street plan, which I frankly don't care that much about and like do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, it, they started hearing it fast and furious, but pretty late in the game and maybe mm -hmm. it was too late to change. I don't know. Yep. They, anyway. It did, yeah. So uh, next steps uh, on jail expansion, if you're concerned about that and where it's going, is uh, Justice Matters has a lawsuit pending against the county um, that uh, contends that the county's vote um, to expand the jail is illegal since it's based on sort of a uh, financing statute from the mid 90s. Um, so they say that they're beyond their authority there. Um, so let's keep uh, pressure on um, that we want this to be put for a public vote potential is a, a potential thing. Well, we don't know where the lawsuit's going to shake down or when. Let's also not delude ourselves that a public vote is going to do it. I so, think a public vote can do it. Public uh, already voted once to reject the jail expansion. That's not to say it won't do it. The other thing is county commission. Now on Monday, we talked about the county commission. Those are the people who did vote to expand the jail, all three of them. Two of them are up for re-election. Um, and actually, no, sorry. Only one of them is up for two. There are two open seats. Um, one is uh, running for re-election. That's um, Nancy Thelman. Nancy Thelman. Um, uh, Michelle DeRusso, is that her name? Michelle DeRusso is not, is running, not running to retain their seat. So there's an open seat and one uh, that is uh, held by an incumbent, but we have some great progressive candidates for um, who have spoken to and believe in um, the reform of our criminal justice system and our Ground up. jail now. Um, so that is... Um, coming up, the primary will be in August, right? Yes, August 4th is the primary. There's a primary because there's too many people for too few seats. Um, so I believe, so there's definitely a primary for district attorney for whom we support Cooper Overstreet and encourage people to start researching candidates and telling your friends they can't sit this one out um, and, and do stuff every day until then. But also, um, you know what? Shannon Reed's looking really good to me and Shannon Patrio. They're in different districts, so maybe we can have both. And there's one other um, member of Justice Matters who's also running. And yes, I'm but I don't know. Forgetting the name right now. They're probably great. So it's super exciting to have some candidates that we can support for city commission. Um, and the county opportunity, commission. county commission, sorry, the opportunity there is um, they may have the potential to reverse this decision um, once they take office. Um, we are in no way full of perfect knowledge about these <laughs> things. And I also it's hard to um, know how it want works. to acknowledge that uh, just being told voting is going to save it is extremely frustrating. And we get that because mm -hmm. guess what? It hasn't been working for us. It's a lane that we know and have experience in and can talk about. But we're going to try to keep sharing and reading and learning resources of other lanes. There's other lanes. Whose actions might prove just as effective and mm -hmm. awesome. So we'll keep keep forwarding oh, those to I you am. and letting you know what you can do there. Um, questions, uh, 
who do we start calling to demand a public vote? I don't know. Yeah, um, I'm gonna try to start looking in. I love reading like deep back page um, stuff to unravel a loophole. So I'm gonna start digging in, see if I can find some like thing they forgot to sign. They did fill out a zero for cost to the city for the jail in the permit last night. So I'm wondering about that one. Mm. And uh, so, you know, we'll see what we can figure out. Sleuthing, rogue style. Other local news, Dave caught a bird this morning. It was disgusting. It was, he- uh, Disgusting behavior, Dave. Disgusting behavior. The bird was just minding its business in our front stoop area, Dave was pretending to just be very hot and relaxed under the Treasure Island pickup table. I didn't see it happen, Lexi was the witness, but Dave just snapped off after that bird, no warning. He pretends to be not much of a jumping and running boy until a bird's there, and then he's after it, which that's, um, I get it's in his cat nature, but we have had several conversations. Hmm about how we don't want him to kill the birds. So it did not die, but we yep. are very worried. We are monitoring its progress because it's sitting on the curb outside and it looked fine as I carefully like gloves, tried to check its body and seemed all right. Nothing too hinky. It was definitely in shock. It was very scared. Yeah. So that happened today. It's been, it's just like. So that was the better news of the day. That was the better news of the day. Um, um, uh, Cause it seems like that bird free again so it's bird friend came to check on it as soon as i oh, put really? it under the tree it was so cute and then it had a little dust bath oh the bird friend not the oh, scared okay. bird the scared bird just sat there with its beak open like it seems like the bird friend could have done more comforting for the i don't bird. know how bird bird friends do maybe that's what the bird friend somebody should talk did. to the bird friend i don't know what they can do i wish i could speak with birds um Okay, anything else to cover in the local news segment? <laughs> FYI, we're not going to be trying to sell you anything for a while. Um, Nikita brought some books, which we Ooh. don't carry here. Yeah, so this is just Most likely. Um, but Nikita also works with the Ravens, so uh, it's a guest spot from the Raven. I'm also going to bet Nikita's going to say, there's a link in the Ravens profiles today for black-owned bookstores you can buy these books from, so do that. Also, and whatever. Or they're probably at the library, too. Yeah. And the library's open. The library's Hooray. open. You Local can go news. pick up your books from them. You can put on holds and then pick them up. I don't think you can just, like, circulate the lobby and have a coffee yet. But I think, I think they're open, open what? now. But I'm not totally sure how it's all working. But well, that's you can exciting. go in now, I used to I get my morning cheese cubes, tiny crackers, and hummus cup from them. So <laughs> My morning cheese cubes. <laughs> my life's not sad, but really, it, it, we're all sad. So. The cheesecakes are delicious. They come from the Merc. Did you know, you know what else you can buy from the library lobby? This is just public service. <laughs> those really delicious Cheetos that are organic. You can buy whole bag, big bags. Oh, library. those are, you really, they have whole bags They have those? the big Stacy's, like Stacy's, not a Cheeto. Those are good. They're those so good. really good. PSA. Um, so this has been a lot of really helpful advice. And um, Keep fighting, Lawrence. Uh, Keep fighting. So... Let's Nikita, bring on Nikita. Do you want to be a stationer to the start? Will you look at the wipey wipes? Yeah. I forgot to bring them over mm -hmm. in mine. Hold up, because we have to just get the wiping situation. Yeah. And we gotta do our thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, spoiler alert. Sports Nikita's here. Fun yet serious. Yeah. Fun <laughs> yet serious. If you've been following along, you know that means Nikita's about to show up in a backward denim cap today. And it's gonna make you feel like we're about to have fun and be serious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just so, I'm just so comfortable with athletics when I'm wearing this hat, you know? <laughs> well, we like to treat our home shopping network as an athletic exercise while we attempt to sort of like bend our way into a shape that feels comfortable in whatever version of the world a person is experiencing on a day to day basis. Did that make sense? Huh. I gotta watch this one back. So, oh, you're going up. <laughs> All right, Nikita, you're up. All Ooh. right, let us welcome our station to the so stars, good. Nikita Mafia. Sports Nikita. Sports, Sports Nikita. Nikita. Very different. <laughs> Very different. Um, welcome, Sports Nikita. Hi. Um, updates are wild for today. Updates? Um, where did you hear the bird? Yeah, the bird thing was the thing that I was thinking about the most, honestly, because yeah. I need, like, some levity. But, that like, is, we do um, need that. Um, I, I wish just, it didn't have to be 
Dave's attempts at bird murder constantly. Bird murder. Um, I <laughs> love that he has just like the strong conspiracy to like convince all birds that he like can't really jump. Like I feel I like know. that's like the whole reason that he's been doing it this whole time is like <laughs> yeah. in case any of us talk so to the birds, con. you know, like it's an so extreme con. blog club where all of us are like telling birds that like he can't actually jump yeah. very high and so like they're all like oh I'm comfortable around they him walk around him like it's fine mm -hmm. and when he lays outside I will say he does that little mermaid sit he'll sometimes do uh, waiting yeah, for a nugget where he sit. really yeah. puts his legs out akimbo in a mm -hmm. way that sort of accentuates their uh, unusualness yes. um it's not like he's crouching there like a bird like a like no. a predator he lays there he lays like, so casually like a like a like a Venus de Milo. Is it a Venus de Milo? No, it's not. That doesn't sound doesn't right. Doesn't sound right. I, I remember I enough have a big art history book. art to dispute it. <laughs> yeah, the Venus is like, she's doing something else. Uh, anyway. Um, I also love about. the update about just using books that you don't like as soapboxes. Um, that's you just gotta a get up there thing. somehow. I'm just gonna put yeah. American dirt right down there and just stand on top of it. How, what is the surface area like of that book? It's and not very large. Okay. It's not the best book to use okay. for that purpose, but it, it could work. I yeah. don't know. And it has the word dirt in it. So it's really meant for you to put it on the ground. Um, okay. Well, you uh, heard it from a bookseller. The mm -hmm. title American dirt is meant to be used as um, just a door. Door stop, stop is always good too. Just yeah. right in the dirt. Mm -hmm. It's you a fun way to like, you can like support a local business like by buying it, but like mm. only using it as a doorstop, you know, like mm. I feel like that's a power move. Um, is there a way that then the author of American Dirt will not receive any of those proceeds? Yeah, that's a problem. Ah, um, dang. We got to work on that. We got to figure out how to make that happen. But okay. I don't well, know. Just put it on the to-do list. Send her a note that's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually care about you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the stock side is, it's very thick. There's, there's been a, there's it's progress, but it's not. We've sold not a lot of it. So I it's, um, have. It's, do you sell it? No, not oh, really. Okay. Um, very pretty much barely. We like yeah. will order it in if people really want it, mm -hmm. but like I try to be like, no, yeah. you don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I decide I for you now. I wonder if it's even still. Oh, is there a new? I'm excited. I'm actually gonna go and look at what the new like best canon revising. Tone. Where the crawdads sing by Delia Owens is on there, so don't get too excited about it. It's on where? It's just like one of the most best selling books of like the last couple of years. It's oh. like a really, it sells like so much and it's not a good book. Yeah, I think people think I'm like an avid reader because I once was, like but now yeah. <laughs> I would be, but I'm also an obsessive reader, so I don't mm. like to put a book down, so I actually don't really let myself read unless I actually have like several days off in a row now. Mm -hmm. So usually Christmas break. Mm -hmm. And then I only read sci fi fantasy novels because I'm sort of that sort of the trash person. Um, mm. It's not trash. It's not trash. Um, I am trying to get you to read short stories. This is you an are. ongoing argument I have with you. You started because um, you shared me that meme and it was so good. I was riveted. Yeah, yeah. Now you're like into it. <laughs> but yeah. People, um, I sorry that I just like to chat with Nikita when I'm supposed to be really letting Nikita excited. tell me about books. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about books today. What book, sh what book should we read, do you think? Um, yeah, so I've seen a lot of posts going around, obviously, of uh, people sharing like books and articles and things, and that's really wonderful, but I've seen a lot of the same books circulating, so I yeah. kind of just wanted to bring in some stuff that was like some different stuff, um, and also a lot of it is like not necessarily like things that are going to like give you like clear concrete steps some of them are but not really a lot of them are like dedicated to that a lot of them are first of all just kind of like would be a really like healing thing for a lot of black and brown people to read um but also like if you want to like try to nurture that sense of empathy um, mm -hmm. it also can help with that um sometimes reading about people's experiences is a good first step to being like maybe I actually should do something here um so <laughs> it's weird how that happens but it does turn out sometimes people are not spurred to action until they like associated it with an emotional thing that they haven't developed yet mm -hmm. um so that's cool um i'm just gonna jump right in jump right I, in. I mean i'm so excited about the top of, of your stack um yeah the top of my stack is the one that's going to be the most of like actual organizing work and like discussion of organizing um it's called emergent strategy by adrian marie brown i've talked about it a little bit before i actually like haven't fully finished it and i borrowed it from someone so i really need to do that uh, <laughs> we're in the same boat. I borrowed this book from Henry Schneiderman literally five years ago, and I kind of haven't <laughs> given it back. Okay, I haven't done that badly. Like, 
I just like you also have a book for me right I now, but it's only been it's been a brief period of time. Henry, I'm, I'm sorry, I basically like stole your emerging strategy book. Mm, yeah, I borrowed this like probably like a year ago. Um, oh, so you're I'm, good. I'm working on it. <laughs> I've actually read part of it, so it's cool. <laughs> um, I can hold on this for another four years. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I'm gonna go for ten. Ten mm-hmm. years? Okay, I'll do that. Um, it's a really good book. Um, it's sort of just a discussion of like community-based organizing and like why that's important and like what that means. Um, there's actually a really cool like, there's a whole like, there's a lot of imagery built into it and a lot of amazing things that Adrienne Marie Brown does with it to discuss like collective action and community. Um, and one of those things is discussing like mycelium networks, which is like fungi networks and like how that system is like what like makes the world what it is. Like there's no mm-hmm. way we could survive without like fungi. Um, and discusses kind of like how that community network like does really work with everything including like Mm -hmm. trees and like all parts of nature um so there's a lot of really cool like nature discussions in there as well um agent marie Marie brown is also a pretty avid um environmental activist as well um just a lot of really cool stuff in there um also um i have talked about this a little bit before but how to survive the end of the world is a really good podcast by adrian marie brown and their sister um autumn brown um, it's just a bunch of different topics about just like decolonization, um, environmental like um, activism, different ways that you can incorporate like understanding of activism in your life. Um, I listened to this really good episode that's on disability activism, um, as well as one on decolonizing the body, which is a really fascinating mm-hmm. one, a really great one. Um, there's even a discussion of um, N.K. Jemisin's Broken Earth Trilogy, which is really cool. N.K. Jemisin is definitely one of my favorite writers of our modern time amazing black woman writes incredible sci-fi fantasy um so yeah that's also just a cool little resource and you know podcasts are a thing you can do for free and just while you're doing other stuff so that's really cool Mm -hmm. um or you can just take a bunch of notes because i like to do that as well (laughs) when i listen to stuff (laughs) just take notes constantly you have your journal out and you're just like yeah i'm just like jotting down stuff this time. will be good for scholars in the future. Um, so the book is Emergent Strategy. It's been out probably like 10 years, ten years, eight, 10 years. It's yeah, been a minute. Yeah, somewhere like that. It's um, been quite a while. Mm-hmm. So uh, grab it, ebook, stream it. Where do you want people to buy books? Um, Honestly, Raven, but know. you got another backup thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Raven is cool. There's also, um, I don't have any of the names memorized, but there are sure. awesome links on instagram to black owned small Mm -hmm. uh bookstores and that is also a really cool place to buy books right now if you're like i have the ability to buy books and i want to do that to buy some anti-racist books a really cool place you can go to buy that yeah like a black owned bookstore (laughs) real facts like y'all are pretty slammed at the raven right now it's gonna take a while to get through it Mm -hmm. so if there's a business that's black owned that's not slammed right now and it's gonna get it right out to Mm -hmm. you and maybe they even have stockpile of these books because maybe they stock them really deep yeah i don't know they sure might, and that's a great resource. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like we were talking so. about earlier, like the library is doing like cold pickup and stuff like that right now, mm-hmm. um, and they have some stuff um, available right I now. I will loan out Henry's copy. <laughs> 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 you're like, I am fully willing to loan out a copy that's I'm not. I'm so long sorry, anymore. Henry. You're never getting it back. It's like gonna be like a chain letter. Mm-hmm. So let me know mm-hmm. if you want to borrow it. Um, that's great. Round two. Round two. Um, Choose your fighter. Which one I want to talk about next. I'm going to talk about um, A Small Place by Jamaica Mm -hmm. Kincaid. Um, I think a lot of people in discussing um, books recently have um, also kind of neglected the like, I mean, they haven't. There's definitely a lot of people talking about stuff. But um, there's also like an area of just people who um, are perhaps um, not from the United States Hmm. um, and have been under colonial rule in many different ways in their lives and have been very impacted by that as well as a lot of people here. Um, And that's like a good area to like expand your knowledge in. They're really short. I think it's, it's like 80 something pages. It's a really Hmm. quick read and a beautiful read. A short story. Um, Perhaps you could call it (laughs) almost a short story. Um, It doesn't really, it kind of counts, but not really. Um, For my brain, 74 pages is not short, but um, (laughs) that is sure. Um, It's a memoir, actually, um, by this author named Jamaica Kincaid, who grew up in Hmm. Antigua, um, which is a uh, island um, in the Caribbean. Um, that was for a very long time under British colonial rule. Mm. Um, And so basically this whole memoir is discussing 
how that has impacted her life um, and how angry she is about that. Mm -hmm. um, it's really beautiful. She discusses like how um, Antigua, I think, has like about 70% of their economy is based in tourism. Um, and so that was like a huge factor of everything that she experienced growing up was like trying to please white people mm. um, and trying to please the tourists. And like there was like a whole reality show at one point that was like about like becoming a bellhop at this one hotel there because like that was seen as like an area of status was like working to like be in the space where you're basically just supposed to please white tourists all the time. So wow, that... it's a very powerful read. It's a very tragic one, but powerful. Um, she definitely does not take things lying down mm -hmm. so that's cool um so this is an experience you can read about that you're probably not going to be seeing online so yeah. much um, um yeah it's probably not something i don't know it's definitely like yeah it's an overlooked one sometimes mm -hmm. um fun fact it received very bad criticism when in reception when it came out because a lot of people were like she's so angry and i'm mad about it um, <laughs> i don't want to read it because she's mad and i'm like well <laughs> In all fairness, <laughs> maybe she should be. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, it is also, I had. Being that colonialist is just the first and best reason to be that. Yeah, it's really hard when you're colonizing a lot of places um, mm -hmm. to have to like face that. So that was all sarcasm. Yeah, um, I, was like, <laughs> I think the kid is being sarcastic. <laughs> it's hard to tell because my voice stays at this tone regardless of what I'm saying, so people don't realize. And I'm like, yeah. I wasn't promoting colonialism. Um, <laughs> it, it might make you have hard feelings, but you earned them, so just have them. Yeah, maybe, yeah, you did sure earn the right to be no. upset when you have experienced a lot of really awful stuff in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just be mad. You can just be mad. Um, another fun fact is that it's is actually earned by people demonstrating right actions behind their right words. Mm-hmm. It's like not a default. No, mm -mm. no, it isn't. It's not even how. How we're it. We're it. <laughs> You're just going for it. I just, I'm just, like, I'm just, just gonna, gonna wind it talking. down. I'm not gonna say it well, and we can already said it good. Uh, kind of. And <laughs> we're all just doing our best. We're all just doing um, our best. I have so many emergent feelings. strategy and yes. Jamaica Kincaid's The Small Place. Um, Adrienne Marie Brown's Emergent Strategy. Right. Jamaica Kincaid's The Small Place. Should I put this list up for people later with like clicking Yeah, on do it. Oh, that's that. so fun. Yeah, um, we should do I'm that. I'm making a long hand list um, while you go. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is um, Jericho Brown's The Tradition. Um, it is a collection of poetry by uh, an incredible poet. Um, I've met him. He's Ooh. really cool. Um, he came to speak here actually at Lawrence Public Library in the last year and actually oh. recently... Um, won a Pulitzer Prize in poetry for Damn. this collection. Congrats, so, Jericho Brown. Um, it's a beautiful collection that discusses like queerness and blackness um, and then discusses like how complacent we are in like terror in our own lives and how we've mm. all become kind of numb to that terror. Um, and it's just a really beautiful, um, like very like rhythmically written um, collection of poetry that's just sort mm. of um, about his experiences with growing up in the South um, and blackness and like, his pride over being black, but also just like the everyday terror that you experience as a black person um, and how difficult that is. Um, I actually have like a quote from his website that talks about the book that just says um, that it's about like why and how we become accustomed to terror. Um, so I just really love it. Yeah. Um, and what a beautiful cover. It's one of the most beautiful wow. covers. I actually talked to him about who designed this cover at one point. It was Sometimes poetry so anthologies don't get me jazzed about mm -hmm. design and I have a real elitist design approach to most packaging. Yeah. <laughs> it's a problem. I'm aware of it. This one though. This one is a really, really good one. It's so um, pretty. Who is, it's designed by someone named Phil Kovac. Kovacevich. Phil Kovacevich is my guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Him. Actually, no, that's not correct. Um, Al, L. Ralph I. Burgess is the cover art mm. designer. The other person was the book design. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, many there's so many layers to creating a book. Yep. Um, All right. So that's Jericho Brown's The Tradition of Poetry Anthology. A poetry Anthology. Um, Looks and sounds beautiful. I'm going to go into my other poetry stuff I have. Oh. <laughs> I have three I'm collections because next I'm just really excited about it. 
Um, the next one is also by a queer black person. Um, this one is called Homie. It's by Denise Smith. Um, it is a really powerful discussion of, again, queerness and blackness. Um, as far as what I want to say about it, um, there's not really much that I could say in it. I feel like you just got to read it. Um, <laughs> I was, there was definitely like, when I was flipping through it earlier, there was like a title that I wanted to read of one of the poems, but I sure don't remember it. So I'm going to come back to it eventually. Well, Nikita's flipping um, for that. I'll say this cover is also super cute. Mm -hmm. And Danesp Smith, they're also a really good person to follow on Twitter. Yes. Um, if you're so looking for good face. voices to follow on Twitter, I just happen to know that they're really prolific and tweet mm -hmm. a lot. And it is also a lot of just like newsworthy things as well as beautifully written epithets. Yes. So why not give Jeanette Smith a follow? Just. Did just, you get that one signed too? No, I didn't. Oh, dang. No, I wish. I wish. Jeanette Smith was also here. Yeah, pretty recently, right? Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, I would believe that. But, I mean, you're part of the thing that's cool, the Raven. What? That's Me? you. That's you, Nikita. What? It's Me? you. <laughs> it's you, Sports Me Nikita. Being cool? um, never. Um, mm. Sports Nikita is not as much a part of it as regular Nikita. No, I'm true. a little less cool yeah. when I have the backwards baseball oh, cap on. But... It's one of my favorite. Hats. I think I'm working on. I'm like working the angle of being like it's so uncool that I'm like trying to like make it an ironic thing because I know it's not cool but I do really like how it look like this so I feel like the denim makes it really mm -hmm. um an enigma because the denim is at once way more cool and extremely dorky <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's kind but of like, just like the vibe I'm cool going right for now mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to be but um, Nikita I grow wants some stuff. to own a miniature um, goat farm so if anyone out there definitely. can help achieve that dream <laughs> If anyone Nikita. knows any information about where I can get a bunch of miniature goats and land to Oh, you know what? Craigslist, them. actually. I look them up all the time. <laughs> You're like, kidding. you have lots of options. Local Craigslist has tons of tiny goats. It's adorable. <laughs> and sometimes when I'm sad, I look them up. I am so happy this is part of your, like, sometimes loop you just of cycles see, that you do. What's the nearest goat I can have if it gets worse? <laughs> I've definitely been in a bad mood and just, like, Googled, like, nearest goat farm to, like, go see if I could pet one. <laughs> I'm like, should I just call these places and see if I can, like, come oh, pet their goats? I um, love I it. Might. We've been talking about what vacation we're going to go on when the rest of our staff is back. And we're going to just whisk Nikita on away on an adventure. Yeah, I'm if coming. If we can ever go somewhere, <laughs> you're coming. Um, it's a paid vacation. Um, literally, like, we're all just going to go on trips. <laughs> and everyone else is going to take care of one affair. And we're thinking Dollywood, but maybe cute goat farm. Mm -hmm. Or that farm we saw with the capybara. If anyone knows oh of any, God. like, sort of near farms with capybaras on them, I would like to know about them. I don't know yeah. where capybaras normally exist. Well, that one was in Japan. Oh, we I wonder if we have capybaras in Canada. Uh, is Lawrence, America Canada. a America. place where capybaras can happily exist? <laughs> I don't feel like we Internet, deserve. please answer this. <laughs> please answer fact checkers. Start Google. Tell me about um, the capybara. But what if we had just like a week on a pretty quiet farm with cute goats? Mm -hmm. Maybe the one run by those guys I saw on the Home Shopping Network. They seem nice. And they this, made nice about it. And um, we could oh. just like read books and wake up and have coffee with the goats yes and it would be so quiet yes okay i love quiet i love goats let's keep working towards Except this gosh i hope places. it's this fall but like realistically we might not be able to leave our very safe state for like nah know, it's a pandemic it's gonna be a long time the goats gotta wait the goats will eventually see our faces um if you have a goat farm and we can come stay with you mm -hmm. for a week Less. Just each of you. Here we are. Uh, <laughs> of course, Nikita uses a lot of abbreviations. I love it. I love it. I love that it has its own lingo. Just, yeah. All right. Just for a moment. I apologize. We're talking about books we've covered Homie by Denise Smith and mm -hmm. another collection of poetry by Jericho Brown, mm -hmm. The Tradition, Emergent Strategy by Adrienne Marie Brown, and mm -hmm. uh, Jamaica Kincaid's The Small Place, a memoir. Next up. Search through and see what's important to talk about at this very moment. Um, this is a collection that I've only like read some of the poems out of, so I can't. Mm say that I've read it entirely, but um, it is really great. Um, it is called Felon. Um, it is by Reginald Dwayne Betts. 
is another collection of poetry that's all about the experience of coming out of incarceration um, mm -hmm. and the experiences of being incarcerated. Um, this one, as you can tell, I checked out from the Lawrence Public Library, so that's cool. cool. I'll finish it. Other people can check it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will finish it, I promise. Um, and I just don't like prisons. Um, fun fact, or jails, or our carceral system. So um, sometimes it's really good to just read about um, that experience. So you can be like, wow, we really got to stop that. I don't like it. Putting people in cages is not for me, um, which I hope that people agree with. Um, <laughs> By now, well, they might have abandoned us if they felt differently. But if you haven't and you're still listening, we appreciate that. And can ask Wonderfair for more resources about why we feel like prison abolition is the way to a more just society. It's a step. Yeah. It's part of the whole dismantling and rebuilding process, but mm -hmm. it's one that um, like there's just a few key elected offices and a huge amount of money. You gotta wiggle around. Yeah, I don't know which one's harder. <laughs> Probably the money. Super, yeah. I think the money is the harder part to wheel around. Mm, but, yeah. you know, previously a lot of folks didn't run for the offices that were involved who had the more progressive ideas. So Ooh. that's changing now, and that's kind of exciting. Nice. To like, not like, just don't get like, don't rely on it. We're not excited, but <laughs> it's not going to be a, a cakewalk it. in any means, okay. but it is oh something. Oh my God, cakewalks. Mm -hmm. how, how long before we can have food? <laughs> it's gonna be a while. <laughs> to be fair, you're kind of spread out in a cakewalk, so maybe it's the only thing we can have. You're at least six. I've feet never apart. won one, so I have like a lot of like. <laughs> you know, for your birthday, you feelings. want us to throw you a cakewalk? Please, yes. <laughs> will you do this for me? Yes, Please take a note. Thank you. I will. I'm a um, Nikita cakewalk. I've literally never won a cakewalk. I hold grudges against my elementary school for this, um, and for many other reasons. It was called Lake Views, and it. It's a more <laughs> majorly white place that I went to as a kid and was told that I Lawrence, had to so. pretend to be a Native mm -hmm. American for a Thanksgiving activity because I would not be believable as a pilgrim. <laughs> so <laughs> it's an interesting place. Um, hopefully things have gotten better in the last 10 to 12 years since I was in, I don't know, however long it's been since I was in elementary school. Um, but let me tell you, it wasn't good when I was there. Yeah. That was bad. That I'm was start bad. to finish the story is rough. I'm so it's sorry. I, don't be sorry. I'm sorry. That uh, is not great. Um, I think they probably don't do the dress up, do um, lies about how America was founded pageants anymore. I don't think but so. I honestly can't feel confident about that, I guess. I do know that when I was there, they told me to uh, put on a little headband with some feathers on the back, so. <laughs> I think I might have had to make one of those in school. Yeah, I, like we made them, and then we wore them. Mostly what I remember, though, is definitely making a turkey hand. Oh, yeah, that was a good part of it, actually. That was but kind of fun. But still part of the big lie. Though the turkey hand great. is less, like, obviously a Yeah. Anyway, burn your turkey hands. Uh, and also, if unless you earned it through your tribal affiliation, also the headdresses. You gotta wear them. Wouldn't recommend. Yep. Need to just get rid of these. So, having them. we digress. <laughs> uh, I'm just going into all the areas of anger in my life right now. <laughs> it's, There's just a lot there. It's always the time, mm -hmm. and um, I think it made sense. I mean, I made you talk about cake blocks. You had me talk about cake blocks, which you did not know was a I secret started, area of pain for me. Here's the deal. There's a reckoning that people should take that every area has secret pain when your whole life you grow up in a system that, like, is pretty jagged. But just, like, <laughs> are you telling me I haven't I'm been treated them. well? I'm telling them. Okay. You don't need to know. I, I didn't want to break I don't even want to bring it up <laughs> that it was a very easy upbringing as a gay black woman. <laughs> don't don't ruin that for me. I'm it was so shocked. simple. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Anyway, no. but I don't know if our viewers knew. So, and there's up to 500 of them sometimes. What? Yeah. That's a bananas number. Yeah. I Just sure don't 
speak well enough for that. Um, that's <laughs> how we often feel, which is why I several times will have moments of sort of like fragile anxiety where I say, I'm sorry, I'm just doing my best. And I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to stop that. Cause y'all just know it by now. Yeah, we know. I mean, I'm saying you're doing great. Thanks. Nikita, do you want to talk about more books or I'll do you want to talk about more. your cakewalk birthday party? <laughs> <laughs> we can just plan it right now if we want to, but instead I think uh, I'm going to talk about I will do that on my own. Books. I will off to the side be planning mm-hmm. your cakewalk birthday party. Just let me know who you want to invite. Okay. We'll keep everyone six feet apart. I think we'll do it in the street. Okay. And we'll all bring cakes mm-hmm. that we make safely uh, according to any dietary restrictions you have. And then we're all going to just walk around mm-hmm. six feet apart listening to whatever music and when it stops on a cake everybody gives that cake to you and you end up with like 12 cakes. Game is rigged. <laughs> it's going to be rigged. It's going to be rigged once in my favor. For once. <laughs> for once. <laughs> it will be rigged for me <laughs> and these, everyone's going to have to deal with these that. These are not the reparations we are Pride looking month. for. Yeah. <laughs> it's Pride <laughs> Month. We're in the middle of just like I get this. this moment. <laughs> Give me my birthday. These cakes are for Nikita. Step off. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to come to this party. <laughs> they, it's really, be I think they're thrilled to give you cakes at your party. Oh, I mean, you cute. can share the cakes as you want, but I don't think you should. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> what not going to lie. It is a I lot of cakes. Not do, it. do you want them to just bring a slice of cake so you get to try like yeah. 12 slices of different cakes? I think slice is better. Okay, because that me, would be a lot. <laughs> okay. I don't think I can eat 12 cakes within the time cake period of them being good. Rock. I'd like to see you try. All right. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah. That's next Wednesday, Nikita. Next, <laughs> next Wednesday, we'll see how far it's I can It's like, we're like three eating. weeks from your birthday. Two weeks? Like, I think we're two weeks. Two weeks? Three weeks. Are I'm, you a Gemini? I sure am a Gemini. Like you me. know this about me. Yeah. Wow. How about that? Isn't it just so thrilling? Um, <laughs> Nikita is a Gemini real. cancer cusp. I'm a Gemini cancer cusp, which is why I cry which all the time. why y'all so are different. Explains a little bit of the differences between us. Um, Look how much he's trying to not be skeptical and let it show in his face. Skeptical of us being different or skeptical of He doesn't astrology. believe in astrology uh, stuff. I'm working on him. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I don't mean people we'll believe the same thing. At least I as mean, far as a religion Yeah. Is. Not that astrology is a religion. I better back up. Nikita. Well, I'm about Should to I show you. a book? <laughs> Well, we started late, so you got like a lot of time on. Oh, I can like just riff a little. <laughs> also, you can just do whatever the hell you um, want. In my opinion, I'm gonna um, show another book. Is what I'm gonna do. Uh, Reginald Dwayne Betts Felon was the Felon. last book. We <laughs> so that's what we talked about. <laughs> we somehow got from incarceration to cake once, but it was a good segue. <laughs> important one to talk about my birthday just, which is the most important thing right now you feel some joy sometimes occasionally so i want to uh, i think cake is good anyway cake is good for me um the next book i'm going to talk about is called she called me woman mm-hmm. um the subtitle of it is nigeria's queer women speak it is mm-hmm. an anthology by a bunch of nigerian women um which is important to me because i'm nigerian um but um it is a really great collection of just a lot of different people discussing what being queer and like a woman means to them or at least being like perceived as a woman uh, means to them um and like how that has like impacted them um and it kind of ranges from stories of like obviously there's like a lot of tragedy there but there's also amazing stories of celebration of being like there's a lot of cool stuff that comes from being Nigerian and queer um and it's a great resource I feel like it's a great thing I know a lot of other people who are Nigerian American or Nigerian around um and when you're queer in Nigeria um you don't really grow up with a lot of like other queer Nigerian like stories around you at least I didn't Mm -hmm. um and I feel like it's just like very much considered like a white thing to be gay and (laughs) I'm here to tell you that's not true um (laughs) so um it was a really beautiful thing for me to read just because I feel like it just like reaffirmed that like there are other people out there um and also just um even if you're not Nigerian or queer, I feel like it's a great thing to read just to be like, huh, you can be African and queer at the same time. It's Mm -hmm. not individual identities that just exist only singularly. Mm -hmm. We all contain a lot of identities at once. 
So this is a collection by multiple authors. It mm -hmm. looks like. It's like cool. an anthology of a bunch of different um, authors. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of them were collected actually like um, orally and then like transcribed. Um, so mm -hmm. that does make a different impact on kind of reading it. Um, but it is really well done. Um, and some of them are just like really short. There's like ones that are a couple pages and then there's like longer stories that'll be like 10 to 15 mm -hmm. probably. Um, so it's a really cool um, collection I just stumbled upon at one point and I was like I probably need that actually in my life and I, I didn't like regret it, it. I hit the vectors really nicely it really happened yeah. to like hit a lot of yeah things for me yeah. um she called me woman she called and me woman multiple authors so we'll include it looks like there's three that might be editors so yeah there are three editors of it who are all from include those in our list a specific organization that's oh, name cool. i am forgetting i believe we'll look it up um we'll look it up it's mm -hmm. like an important thing to know um i think they're from a specific organization um or they just might be three people who were like hey we really care um and this is our life um so yeah i like it all that right that one um she called me woman check Number seven, the most powerfully magical number. Which will it be? Number seven. Um, mm -hmm. uh, is it the most? Okay, yeah. Let's go well, for it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to segue anymore. It just feels like a good one. It is. It's a good one. It's kind um, of. This one I actually don't have with me, but I have a different book by the same author. But I'm going to talk about a different one just because I feel like discussions of ability in Blackness are like always really cool and important um, and sometimes get overlooked. Um, so there's this amazing um, Nigerian author, Nigerian American author, um, who wrote this book called Akata Witch. Um, that is, her name is Nettie Akorafor. Um, she actually came to speak at Liberty Hall like a couple years ago. Um, she's a really, really amazing uh, fantasy writer. Um, and she actually has this really short, which is also great because my brain doesn't do long things very well. And I think a lot of people have trouble concentrating. Um, this short uh, memoir of hers called Broken Places in Outer Spaces, um, which is actually the story of how she became a writer. Um, so she has a lot of work out there, like Akata Witch and Akata Warrior are a two-part um, series that she did that is um, all about just, um, like all of her stories are kind of placed in Nigeria to discuss those experiences um, because she was like growing up. I didn't see a lot of um, fantasy stories that would like take place in Africa and when they did they were usually like really sad stories that didn't discuss any kind of power there or any kind of like actual like mythology there and things like that so she incorporates a lot of like actual experiences from the amount of time that she spent there and her family and like her experience of Nigeria um and incorporates a lot of mythology and really cool things like that and like spiritual aspects and really fun things um that she like incorporates into her like world building um so that's super cool um but she wrote this memoir, um, discusses how she got to that point in her life. Um, and it actually started from her having a scoliosis surgery that went really poorly. Oh. Um, and it left her um, temporarily paralyzed from the waist down. Um, and that was, she was like actually an athlete before that happened. And that was kind of where she based a lot of her identity in. Um, and then forgotten all that. And kind of just felt really limited for a really long time because she didn't know if she would be able to get that... Um, to get her ability to walk back. Um, and she learned over time that there's actually a lot of strength in that experience for her. Um, and that's like what encouraged her to be a writer. And she also, you know, just discusses the fact that not everything is about like people with different abilities obviously still have a lot of awesome things that they can do and it's not really like a limitation. Um, so that's just like a really cool discussion um, that I feel like could always be had. Um, I think a lot of people also just don't really think about ability much um, mm -hmm. in general and then like thinking about it as like in combination with blackness and how that might impact someone um, is something that I don't think gets talked about very often. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like most discussions of disability and ability in our society tend to be just like TV shows that show white boys with autism um, and not even really doing that very well. Mm. So that's kind of <laughs> I feel like that's a pretty specific example. Um, I have a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of, like, there's a long list of shows that just, like, fall under that category, and I'm, it's just, like, I don't understand, um, but yeah, there's also other people out there with other forms of ability and disability, and mm -hmm. they have really important stories that need to be shared, mm -hmm. um, and that story is specifically about one, a person who ended up, um, becoming more able-bodied, I don't really like that phrase, but, you know, more, um, who was able to walk again, so the whole mm -hmm. story is kind of different, because it's, 
I'm not like Temporary. discouraging the idea of yeah, yeah having permanent ability um, differences because um, I think all of that is really good too. But um, so Nettie Okorafor with both great fiction, mm-hmm. which is kind of um, really good fiction out there. Futurist sci-fi. Yeah, Does that sound um, I think right? she describes her work as African futurism, um, which is really cool. That makes sense. Um, she also wrote this amazing Nigerian short market. story about environmental degradation oh. and that being like a colonial impact on Nigeria who had a lot of resources at the time of this like supposed which you know it's historical and future looking um (laughs) and just like um how Nigeria adapts to that um and it's a really cool story so Um, we'll include both Akata Witch and Broken Places in Outer Spaces both are really cool yeah it's a really cool thing it's our list we can do whatever we want Mm -hmm. number seven is two books deal with it see how easy it is to bend the rules yes <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy i just did it um no problem <sighs> yeah. yeah just really excited about our goat farm let's mentally I'm project so ourselves there for one second okay everybody do that with us mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on them. My little goat was had little two little horns. <laughs> really? And I was just petting it. What color was it? It was black and white, black like and white. the one you showed me uh, <gasps> when you shared me that Instagram. Yeah. That was a really good one. That was a cute goat. I'm kind of just picturing that goat that I met at Lewisburg. Oh, that really was a cute goat too. Was that like a brown and white goat? goat? I think it was a little bit brown, a little yeah. bit white. Yeah. Multitudes. They contain multitudes. Just make sure you're taking moments to breathe and think about goat farms. Uh, fun fact, a scientist once did a... Um, <laughs> he took the time to put a bunch of goats into, um, like, MRI machines, question mark? I don't uh-huh. know. Which is the kind of machine that's, like, good for sure. viewing brain activity? That One of those. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm not a scientist. They are. Cats. And... Um, they showed them a bunch of different images, and one of the images they showed them was um, of a human face, and they produced dopamine in their brains when they saw humans because they love us. So this is really good research that someone told me once at a queer farmer's convergence, and I've never stopped telling this Number story. one, queer farmer's convergence. Amazing. Or <laughs> Iowa. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that was kind of recent, wasn't it? No, yeah, last year, yeah. You what have probably time. heard a little bit. I about heard you it. talking about going. Yeah. Um, number two, um, goats love us. It's nice to have that reaffirmed. I heard they were like cuddly, like cats, which is amazing. Sometimes I think they are. They're very cat-like in the way they act. Mm-hmm. They like poop their hands and stuff for pets, and it's just like it's the best thing. I love them okay. so much. All right, well, we have they that to look us. forward to. Yeah. Um, number eight. Um, this is another one that's going to be two books by the same person who I've already talked about today, but we're going to do it. Um, really, uh, this is the most recent book this author wrote. Um, Edgar Jemison, who I talked about before, who is an amazing black woman who writes uh, fantasy and some sci-fi, um, wrote this book that came out recently called The City We Became. Um, and it's an urban fantasy, so it takes place um, in New York City. And it's a discussion of like how... Um, every city has like a soul is kind of the way that she kind of places it. And it's sort of like a discussion of like building of a city um, based on that kind of concept. It's like, it's a difficult thing to describe, but just know that it's about the creating of New York city in a really cool and fresh and amazing way. Um, yeah. And it just discusses a lot of things like gentrification um, in a very nuanced way, um, in a very cool way, which is what she likes to do is just be super awesome and super cool and like discuss things in a very like complex and nuanced way and doesn't just kind of like simplify stuff, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, complex and nuanced feels like the perfect description for N.K. Jemisin. For stuff, yeah. If you love world building and sci-fi or fantasy novels and you've never read N.K. Jemisin, you should do that immediately. Absolutely. And I love how she always works in religion in a way that's mm-hmm. different than the religions we've had before. So you think, we only have one minute? We did it. You just start over. <laughs> Nikita, you get, this, do you get the whole minute. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. Um, and there's also this awesome collection of short stories by N.K. Jemison called How Long to Black Future Month, which is probably just very relevant based on the time. And... Those are the majority of the books that I wanted to talk about today. So I feel like I did a pretty good job. I um, feel like I nailed it. Um, if it's their first black time authors. in K, what would be mm-hmm. the book you think? Start with The City We Became? Just start at the end? 
work their way back. Just start at the end because it's very relevant um, and really good. Love it. Yeah. Nikita, we don't, I hope we we'll tried to tell you I really loved your books and thank you for coming telling us about all the thank books you. and we're going to put a link to all the books in the thing. It's about 30 seconds. Oh, 30 old seconds? What? Nikita? <laughs> tell us about your favorite goats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like the little ones and oh, yeah. the big ones and when they make little beat noises and um, mountain goats are cool. They make really weird noises. Oh, I love that. What is a mountain goat sound like? Like a meow, but oh. like in a weird way. Yeah, you know? Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. They're all pals. They're all goat pals. I still haven't come up with a pun yet, but I'll work on it. They're just different kind of goats, folks. <laughs> that was our show from a stationary store. We did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> um, YouTube, we're still here with you. So just thanks. We'll put this list up. And I like technology. I think I can probably figure out a way to like, Put it in a post, but then with links to the author. Sure, I'm going to think about the, the way to do it most helpfully. Yeah, you can add it to the YouTube description. Mm. You snap it off. Oh, smart. Smart idea. That smart. is a smart idea. A um, little bit of a reading rainbow vibe today, and I'm here for it. Nikita's also underneath a literal rainbow. So take a look. It's in a book. Reading rainbow. Now that he was the host, <laughs> I'd watch it. I just want you to. Know. You all? Oh hell yeah! That's nice. Who wouldn't watch that? Yeah, It'd be so cute. You could even you could change hats every day. Oh my god! I could change into so many hats. I have so many of them. It'd be just part of the whole thing. <clears throat> part of me, I would just think about Nikita's many hats and make me very happy. Um, okay, we got to figure out the cakewalk thing right yeah, now. Cakewalk planning. Because your birthday's in two weeks, so we don't have a ton of time. But. Uh, two probably i think it's three weeks i am really lied um, i kind of don't know what day Do you want me to <laughs> yeah june 20th oh i meant today today i didn't really know what day today was it's i also june, probably uh, didn't off the top of my head know your birthday it was june 20th third. that's a big birthday for you it's summer solstice yeah um, juneteenth and then june 20th all mm -hmm. one big celebration then father's day it's the 21st, Father. 21st this year. So your birthday's a Saturday? Birthday's a this Saturday. This works great for our cakewalk because you already usually Perfect. for the day. Yeah. If that's, unless that's not fun. It's fun to have a party well, at work, it's right? Fun. It's like having a party at school. Pretty much, yeah. And that's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll plan this later. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still on YouTube. That's your bonus content today, YouTube. Party planning at Wonder Fair. Um, Nikita, thank you for being here. Yeah, I have I had so much fun. So Thanks much for discussions. sharing more goat thoughts with me. Mm -hmm. I love learning that goats have dopamine when they see us. I wonder how Dave feels. Can I get him in an MRI? <laughs> Is that ethical? I don't know. But could you probably? They did it with the goats. Yeah. Um, yeah, they did do it with the goats. I guess I that's really know. heard of. It's just like not. I just feel like thing to do. it's probably more ethical with cats because we're hanging out with them. And what if it turns out they hate us? We got to release all the cats. Uh, I really would be so disappointed. I know. I really hope that. I guess we would just like adapt it to be like you have goats as pets rather than cats as pets. I'm pretty sure the cats like us. I think so. Mulberry likes you. Mulberry really likes me. She snuggled with me all night oh, last night. It was Mulberry so cute. knows. That's good. Dave's not in much of a snuggle. Mulberry? 